Today on How It's Made Dream Cars. It may look like a saloon, but it's a luxury sports car. The Maserati Quattroporte. In 1914, Alfieri Maserati, with two of his five brothers who worked in the car industry, established Societa Anonima Officina Alfieri Maserati in the Italian city of Bologna. In 1940, the company moved to its current location in Modena. Although the company moved, its trident emblem remained the same. Designed by the only brother not to work in the industry, it was inspired by a statue on the famous fountain in Bologna and can be found on all its iconic cars, such as the 1953 A6 GCS, the 1959 3500 GT and the single-seater 6CM racing car from the 1930s. The company still has the drawings of the very first Maserati it designed, the Tipo 26. These designs are among the company's founding documents, along with Mario Maserati's sketch of the Trident emblem. The Quattroporte made its debut in 1963 and quickly became the company's flagship model. The car is celebrating its 50th anniversary and Maserati has redesigned its famous model. As part of the redesign, the new Quattroporte's body is longer and wider than the previous Mark V version. Although bigger, it is in fact 100 kilos lighter. That's because the car is now made of one-third aluminium. To ensure that the car bodies meet the highest manufacturing standards, technicians submit them to stringent metrology tests. Random samples of components are taken from the production line, which are then installed onto a master copy of the car's body, called a Meisterbock. Extremely precise calipers and other measuring devices are then used to make sure the parts are exactly the right size. A tiny amount of variation is acceptable, but only within a few tenths of a millimetre. The process continues on another master copy of the car, where small stickers have been placed every 10 centimetres. These stickers act as a guide when laser technology is used to both measure the geometry and to check that the parts conform to standard before they're assembled on the production line. If the metrology measurements are good, production continues. Here, the rear section of the chassis is being assembled. The parts are held in place and then large welding guns are used to join the two parts together. A series of reference points are followed as the steel parts are spot welded using an electrical charge of 380 volts. Next, all the components of the chassis are positioned into a yellow jig which aligns the parts. A set of robots then swings into action and begins spot welding the parts together. Another robot holds the left side of the car flat as a thin bead of sealant is applied. The robot then installs the part in another jig. This jig, along with another holding the right side of the car, align the sides to the chassis before spot welding them in place. This is what car manufacturers call body in white. That means that all the sheet metal and aluminium components of the body have been welded and riveted together. Once or twice per eight hour shift, a body in white is chosen at random for quality control check to make sure production remains accurate. The car body is now ready for a paint job. For that, it comes here to the paint shop. To begin, the car body has a bath to remove any residual grease or dust. A shower completes the job. The car body is hanging from a chain 
which a current runs through, giving it an electrical charge. A pool of liquid beneath it has the opposite electrical charge. As the car body lowers into the pool, paint particles suspended in the liquid are attracted to the metal because of the opposite electrical charges. This is called cataphoretic dip painting. The coating is then baked on in an oven. Then a large duster made of emu feathers removes any residual static. Next, a polyurethane liquid primer is manually sprayed on the car. This process is only to paint the hard to reach areas of the car body because a robot is used to complete the painting process. Again, the car body has an electrical charge while the waterborne base coat paint powder has the opposite charge. The two charges attract making the paint stick to the surface of the metal. To finish the job, the robots spray on a clear coat resin top coat. The body now heads into a huge oven at 140 degrees Celsius, where the paint will dry in 20 minutes. Every single paint job on every single car is given a thorough inspection. Once it passes this inspection, the body of the Maserati Quattroporte is done. But the car is far from complete. For one thing, it needs an engine. The engine workshop is in the Ferrari plant in Maranello, not far from Maserati's home base in Modena. Ferrari bought Maserati in 1997. Although the Quattroporte's brand new engine is built by Ferrari, it was designed by Maserati. First, a Ferrari technician picks up a crankshaft and transports it to a waiting cylinder block. To help make the new Quattroporte lighter, the cylinder block is made entirely of aluminium. The crankshaft, however, is steel. The Quattroporte comes with either a V6 or a V8 engine. The V6 produces 409 brake horsepower with a maximum torque of 550 newton meters. Next, a series of bearing rings are installed over the shaft. Each bearing has a mate on the other side of the shaft. Together, the two bearings form a ring that the technician bolts together. Four ring bearings in total ensure the shaft stays in position. Once the crankshaft is secured, the cylinder block moves to the next station, where the pistons are installed. This is done manually. One by one, the pistons are placed into their waiting cylinders. Each piston has a connecting rod extending down from the head. The connecting rod forms a semicircle at the bottom. This semicircle fits around the crankshaft. This bottom end of the piston's connecting rod is then fastened to the crankshaft. To gain access to these fastening points, the cylinder block is flipped upside down. To gain access to the bolts that need to be fastened, the crankshaft is turned. The engine designers specified the exact amount of torque that should be applied to each bolt when tightening them, which is executed automatically. On top of the cylinder block, two covers will enclose the camshafts. Before installation, a robot prepares them by applying a thin bead of sealant around all the edges. As the robot performs its task, it simultaneously takes photos of the operation and compares them to a master. The covers are then fitted over the camshafts. Next, all the wiring is connected including that for the spark plugs, the direct injection system, and the engine's multiple sensors. Not only is this newly designed engine lighter than its predecessor, it's simultaneously more powerful, more efficient, and more versatile. 
it can be switched from rear wheel drive to four wheel drive and from automatic to manual at the press of a button. The 3.8 litre V8 twin turbo can accelerate the car from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.7 seconds and reach a top speed of 307 kilometers per hour. The new engine is able to achieve these new parameters thanks in part to two new additions, twin turbos. Maserati engineers were able to integrate the turbo housing into the exhaust manifold, keeping the new components compact and lightweight. Each turbo will be fed by its own air-to-air -air intercooler. Having installed a gasket at the exhaust manifold, the turbo is fitted and then bolted into place. Fully assembled, these V6 and V8 engines are ready to be transported back to the Maserati plant. All the components of the Quattroporte have been manufactured. Now it's time to put them together. The fully assembled Maserati body hangs suspended above the fully assembled mechanical parts, ready for the technicians to unite them. Using the French term for a wedding, the car industry calls this phase the marriage. The assembly shop is where all the elements that make up the Quattroporte are brought together. First, all the major components of the front section are assembled. This includes the engine, the gearbox, the front shock absorbers, the front end of the exhaust system and the front brakes. This subgroup is placed into a jig, which already contains the rear section of the car. Both parts then move to the next stage. First. The middle section of the exhaust system, which comprises of two parallel pipes, is installed. This joined middle section will then be connected to two separate pipes that fan out to either side of the car. These two sections include two separate silencers. A scientific study conducted in the UK a few years ago found that Maserati engines have the sexiest sound of any car. In fact, 100% of women tested experienced a spike in testosterone levels when listening to a Maserati roar. This may have something to do with the special curves and bypasses designed into these exhaust systems. Next, the drive shaft is installed. The gearbox for the new Quattroporte has six different settings. Automatic, normal and sport, manual, normal and sport the ICE, or Increased Control Efficiency Mode, and new in this latest model, a four-wheel drive mode. Next, the fuel tank is lowered and secured into place. Capable of holding 80 litres of fuel, the Quattroporte with the V8 engine can travel 100 kilometres on 11.9 litres of fuel. At another workstation, the car's dashboard is prepared for installation. As the interface between the driver and the car, the dashboard is a key element. The Quattroporte dashboard is made from magnesium because of its lightness and strength, and it's upholstered in leather by specialists in Moderna. After inserting the steering column, all of the electrics are installed and connected. It's a high-tech dashboard which means there's a lot of wires. In addition to standard features such as cruise control, speedometer and rev counter, there's a touchscreen monitor which controls the radio, sat-nav, DVD player, Bluetooth connections and heating and ventilation systems. And hidden throughout the car are 15 speakers. There's also no need to press a button or use a key to unlock the car. The key just needs to be with you when you try to open the door or the boot. Once finished, this will be one of the fastest mass-produced saloon cars in the world, as it can reach 307 kilometers per hour. Once the dashboard's complete, it's installed in place. A grip holds the dashboard in position as it's secured. All that's missing is the steering wheel. If the driver chooses to use the car in manual mode, 
two paddles on either side of the steering column make it easy to change through the Quattroporte's eight gears. With the dashboard installed, it's time to fit the windows. This robot uses vacuum-powered suction cups to pick up a piece of glass. Then a bead of sealant is applied around the edges. The robot has a set of laser sensors that are able to measure the geometry of the window opening. These sensors allow the robot to center the windscreen perfectly before pressing it into position. Next, the headlights are manually installed. These include an adaptive light control system. This system automatically tracks the movement of the steering wheel so that the beam points to the inside of a bend. They also use xenon bulbs, which produce a brighter and clearer beam. The Quattroporte's body is now ready to meet its powertrain. The yellow jig we saw earlier transports the mechanical elements directly under the body, which hangs suspended above. The powertrain is then raised into position so that the two sections of the car can be secured together. Once the marriage of the Quattroporte body and powertrain is complete, the doors and wheels are installed, bringing all elements together to create the finished product. But a few finishing touches and tests remain before it's ready for the customer. Parking the car over this station allows access to the undercarriage so that wheel alignment can be conducted. It also reveals another unusual feature of the Quattroporte, its flat bottom. The central cover over the exhaust system will be installed once access to it is no longer required. The flat bottom feature is designed to make the car more aerodynamic. This improves its performance while reducing fuel consumption. Wheel alignment also improves the car's efficiency and handling. A computer monitor registers the alignment position as each is done. The wheel alignment benches uses laser sensors connected to a computer to provide precise data. Every single Quattroporte must undergo stringent quality control tests before manufacturers allow it out into the world. To start with, each car is driven into this testing room, where it's put through its paces for up to 15 minutes. The car is connected to a computer which measures all its parameters. The car is revved up to 130 kilometers per hour, while the computer checks the exhaust system, the shock absorbers, the steering, rolling noise, engine sound, gear shifts, brakes, and every other element of the car's performance. Next, the car is driven onto a mechanism called a shaking table. Simulating the bumpiness of normal roads, the shaking table gives the Quattroporte suspension a thorough workout. This test also ensures that all of the car's connections, whether mechanical or electrical, are solid and can't be shaken loose. However, each car also goes out on the road for a 70-kilometer test drive to make sure everything works properly in the real world. Next, the car has to endure a thorough soaking. The car has to be able to perform in all weather, so for 20 minutes a bank of high-pressure nozzles simulates a complete range of different rains. Shooting water at the car from above, below and all around, the test includes everything from a slow but persistent British drizzle, a classic rainstorm, to a sudden tropical monsoon. During the test, the interior of the car is checked to make sure there are no leaks and that the water seals are working properly. The new Quattroporte joins the Maserati fleet in the company's Modena showroom. The showroom displays the grills that have featured on the front of Maserati cars throughout its long history. Maserati only produces the Quattroporte on demand. This means that every single car they make has been pre-ordered and is produced to a customer specification down to the smallest detail. This includes not only the finishing material of the interior, 
which can be made from either carbon fiber or nine types of different wood, but also the color of the paintwork, the leather, and even down to which type of stitching is used. A luxury vehicle with the heart of a sports car, the Quadraporte follows the template of a basic saloon car. It has four doors, four wheels, a boot and windows, but that's about where the resemblance ends. From its multifunction touchscreen navigation system, its leather interior, to its powerful engine stamped with the unmistakable Trident emblem, every other aspect of the car is far from basic. The flagship of the Maserati fleet, the new Quattroporte is both powerful and luxurious. With its four-wheel drive mode and increased fuel efficiency, it's also practical. Nearly a hundred years of innovation and craftsmanship are behind this car, which despite its 50-year pedigree, continues to be state-of-the-art. Discovery Turbo is spending all Sunday with the Wheeler dealers, you know, just in case you were thinking of making plans. Next tonight on Discovery, though, it's brand new Texas Car Wars.